Hello and welcome to the third Australian Citizen Science Association Conference, SITSAIAS 21. It is so wonderful to have you all here. My name is Erin and I'm the chair of AXA. Let me start by quoting from Professor Hugh Possingham's recent conversation article. My utopia is based on one simple idea. We should all become citizen scientists. Hugh goes on to say, that's why I see citizen science is so important. It is information produced by the people for everyone's benefit. Its power lies in the opportunities it gives anyone to learn about the, the world, to ask questions about how it is changing and how our actions are affecting that change. Yes, indeed, Professor Possingham, I couldn't agree more. And I hope you'll find similar inspiration over the next three days. Before we formally begin, on behalf of AXA, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're joining from today throughout Australia and globally. I'd like to introduce Michael West for our formal acknowledgement of country. Michael is a member, cultural representative and traditional owner, a traditional custodian with the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council being responsible for the land, air, water, history, traditions, and culture within our boundaries, and is currently the community development manager. Michael is a member of the Stolen Generations, an Aboriginal man of the Gamilaroi Nation, and was born, raised, and has lived his whole life in Sydney. Michael is proud to be part of the oldest living civilization, encompassing history, knowledge, ceremony, traditions, and culture practice for more than 65,000 years. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Erin. I'd like to say Bajadi Gamarua, that's in the Sydney language in Sydney CBD where um, the Land Council sits. I'm actually, uh, that is Gadigal land of the Eora Nation. I'm actually out a little bit further. I'm out towards um, Bankstown, um, Saltpan Creek out there. So I'm actually on the land of the Bidjigal, which is a river flat clan, it goes from Botany Bay up, up the river. I'd like to say on behalf of um, all the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, we acknowledge all the land, um, traditional owners and custodians of the land that you're on around this globe that we call Earth, this little planet we, we share floating through the ever expanding cosmos. And we need to remember that our Aboriginal people are scientists and have been scientists for a long time. If you pull out um, a $50 Australian note, you will see uh, Unipin on there who had some amazing um, inventions there. And as you um, know, uh, the aircraft today and wings and that, the flight and everything is, can be traced back when you think about it to um, boomerangs and it's important to understand that um, our culture and our our culture as Australians and our sites as Australians, for those of you who are Australians, you have a responsibility to look after our sites, not only for our fellow Australians into the future, but for humanity itself. When you think about it, aquaculture in Brewarana in New South Wales, we have fish traps that go back more than 40,000 years. Also, I encourage you to have a look at the South Australian Museum, because we have our boomerangs in there that were dug up in the early 70s that go back more than 10,000 years. Also, I encourage you and we encourage you from the Land Council to have a look at um, also Google when you get a chance in the Victorian uh, Museum, there were not too long ago, there was an exhibition where Aboriginal people demonstrate that Aboriginal people have been trading with Indonesia, the Macassans, and further afar to China more than 500 years ago. Uh, we, we didn't just sit here by ourselves. Uh, we had many different communities come to us and do trade and share culture and share stories. And um, also, I ask you to have a think about this and to, to have a look and Google this. Now, Vatican, and hunting birds in a manuscript. If you have a look at that, it goes back more than 800 years. And that shows a wonderful Australian bird, a cockatoo in there. So obviously 
there must have been trade routes that go back that long. So, um, yes, it, it really, need, these stories need to be told and need to be understood if we are moving forward and working together to create a better world. And um, also, I, I saw um, last night, Torres Strait Islanders, uh, on the news, they had about how they're being affected by global climate change. Yes, it is fact there is global climate change and we need to work together and walk together for better outcomes. And it starts with the science and, and respecting that and understanding it and working with it. And when you think about it, we listen to science through the pandemic and we are still going through a pandemic and, and we are encouraging you um, from the Land Council to do respect the appropriate actions in your country, whether it's wearing masks, take those vaccinations. And, you know, it's all, all about, as we say, it's about community and we all belong to our own communities and many different communities when you think about it. But ultimately we belong to one, one community and, and one mob and one race and that's humanity. So we've got to respect what we are doing um, working together for, for a better future for not only ourselves, but for those who come after us. And our va most valuable resource is our children, when you think about it. The children are the most valuable resource. Um, that's so important. Now, I've got with me here, um, traditionally what we do when we meet someone and go and deliver a message somewhere, we would have a message stick. We would have to take. We would go to the edge of country. We would light a fire and we'd be greeted by that clan, tribe, or nation. And we'd be taken to the leadership, which is the elders and knowledge holders. That message could be about a marriage dispute. It could be about a corroboree, a gathering where we all get together. Um, I've got with me here a message stick that is in the shape of a boomerang. Um, that's symbolic of, I don't know, most people think boomerangs return, but they don't. There's different types of boomerangs. There's hunting ones, um, there's fighting ones. Um, Aboriginal people do not just sit around and sing um, Kumbaya. Aboriginal people, both male and females, are warriors. It's important to understand that. Um, men and, and women, we have uh, different roles within our community, traditionally. Um, and women were, were um, actually in Nawis, which are canoes in Sydney, and did fishing there. So I've got with me here now this, um, I think you can see that, the different concentric circles on there. That is, um, the circles represent places like here right now. They represent all the places where you are around this planet that we are um, broadcasting out to. Also, it represents the cosmos. So all the different little paths on there, I think you might see, and the dots, they all represent all the journeys through our life that we go on. And also the connectivity of everything in the universe. Everything is in the universe is connected. We must need, we must understand that. Um, as Aboriginal people, we see things as a holistic approach, like health. Our health is not just mental and physical. It's about the health of the country it's a spiritual health and cultural health, the health of your culture. We encourage everyone to go out and um, connect with your identity and understand who you are. I'll just make the point too that um, this is about diversity. And diversity, it's important that we share perspectives and ideas and no doubt that's what you'll be doing here for the next three days. Um, you'll be sharing stories as we say, having a yarn. And also, you want to build those relationships is what you want to do too. It's so important. And it all comes down to community. And we must listen to the elders, the knowledge holders there, as you can see there. And um, about identity and, and, and as um, Aretha Franklin, a, a great civil rights leader, yes, she was a civil rights leader. She said to us, you know, we've got a RESPCT, sorry about this, um, show a little respect, don't we? show a little respect. So on behalf of Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, our elders, our board and our members, we, we welcome you here to this conference, wherever you are from this little 
blue ball, blue marble floating through the ever-expanding cosmos. And um, we encourage you to, to find the stories and understand the rich history of all this planet we, we share and to learn about each other. I think um, diversity is great. It will be a very boring world if we're all the same. And diversity gives us ideas, perspectives to draw on and the experiences for solutions to the problems we face in the world. So um, welcome here. Let's all work together and walk together for a better future. As I said, the children are our greatest resource and we must bring them up, educate them to be um, thinkers for themselves. And as we always say, um, I'm not sure if you can read that, it's a bit hard. Um, always was, always will be Aboriginal land here in Australia. Um, more than 65,000 years plus, um, we know it's longer than that. Um, never seeded. So let's all work together for a better outcomes for all of humanity because we all belong to that one race and that's humanity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. I also wanted to pay my respects to the traditional owners on whose country I am, I am living. I am on Gadigal country. And I can see in the chat, we're all sharing where we're joining from today. So thank you for that. Well, it's been over three years since many of us gathered in person uh, for the last conference in Adelaide summer of 2018. And citizen science has made huge strides since then. For example, a recent paper by Mazzaglio and Callahan found that Australians rank fourth globally in their use of the iNaturalist application. And with Palaccio et al finding Australia ranks third globally for the production of citizen science scientific literature, which is a fantastic achievement. Since Adelaide, we've had additional state, federal and organizational citizen science strategies developed. We've had another dedicated citizen science grant round and the continuation of the Eureka Prize in citizen science. And many of the champions responsible for these initiatives and winners of these initiatives are joining us today, so thank you. Nearly every day there are reports of citizen scientists observing new species behaviors, documenting new species, and reporting invasive species incursions. We've also seen huge growth in other areas of citizen science, such as chemistry, astronomy, and health. AXA has been really busy since Adelaide as well. We ran SITSAI Oz online last year. We launched AXA Consulting, delivered Connecting Communities in June, launched a new website, and have been engaged on the international front working with our sister associations on the United Nations Science Policy Business Forum initiatives, UNESCO Open Science Recommendation, and the launch of the Global Citizen Science Partnership. We've also, of course, been organizing this conference, and I wanted to acknowledge the very hard work of our volunteer conference organizing committee, with a special shout out to Lisa Evans, who has been championing this initiative all along, supported by our professional conference organizer, Shanna Sheldrick, who many of you have interacted with already. Thank you so much, everyone, for your commitment and your hard work to making this conference happen today. I also wanted to take this time to thank our sponsors. We absolutely could not do it without your support, and we are so grateful to partner with you in this event. Our platinum sponsor is the Atlas of Living Australia. Our premier sponsor is the Department of Industry, Science, Energy, and Resources. Our virtual platform sponsor is the Queensland Water and Land Carers. Session sponsors are the Australian Museum, Australian Academy of Science, and the University of Sydney Charles Perkins Centre Citizen Science Node. Our bronze sponsor is Green Adelaide, and our supporters are the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research, Landscape South Australia Murray Lands and Riverland, and SciStarter. We have a number of prizes and competitions running over the next few days. Our first prize is the Gamification Prize. It's the on-air gamification feature that many of you can see when you first enter the portal. And you are awarded points as you navigate and attend sessions throughout the next three days. So our uh, fabulous prize is donated by the Australian Museum and we thank them very much for their generous gift. We also have a photo competition prize 
where we're asking you to post photos of the conference in action over the next three days on any social media platform. Please make sure to um, put your post public and use the SITSIOS21 hashtag so we, our judges can find it. And this competition closes at 2 p.m. on Friday and we'll announce the winners at the closing session. We also have our favorite tweet competition. So warm up your Twitter fingers. Again, make sure to use the hashtag SITSIOS21. And again, this competition closes at 2 p.m. Uh, on Friday. And some of the prizes up for, off, uh, for offer are a signed book by our pa patron, Jeff Garrett, uh, and a signed Costas signed book, his most recent book, which I have here. And then, of course, Corey Tutt's book as well. All right, I've got two more things to say before I hand over to someone that doesn't need an introduction. Uh, we've cre created um, a climate change ideas board. It's linked to the on-air portal. And we felt it was really important for our community to share our thoughts, feelings, and positive actions we are taking and can take in response to climate change, thinking about what Michael just said in his acknowledgement to country. So please visit this board throughout the next three days and write and add pictures. And really, we really hope this board will be a shared message of empowerment from our community in the face of climate change. Finally, the conference organizers have worked really hard to develop a program and interactive portal, portal that will hopefully be the next best thing to meeting up in person this year. I know it's hard when we are all at home and easily distracted, but I invite you to really delve into this conference, connect with others on the platform, and make every effort to celebrate, communicate, and co-create citizen science. We've certainly earned it. If you'd like to learn more about AXA, and aren't already, please sign up to our regular newsletter or reach out to us via our social channels or our national coordinator, Amy Slocum. So now without further ado, I'll hand over to Costa. Uh, Costa Georgiatis is a landscape architect, environmental educator, host of the TV show, Gardening Australia. And I invite you to turn into, tune into Costa's keynote tomorrow afternoon as well. But over you to over you to you, Costa, to to help us launch this conference. Thank you, thank you for the uh, wonderful uh, welcome there, Erin, and good afternoon, everyone. I would like to follow up on on Michael's uh, welcome, and I'd like to acknowledge that I'm here in Sydney, in North Bondi, on. Gadigal land of the Eora. I even noticed that uh, Nadia is also here on uh, on Gadigal country, not not far from me here. And thanks everyone for for working the chat and letting us know where you are, and most of all, uh, which country you are on. Um, just the fact that this has and is becoming a staple part of, and recognition of of the land. The, the, the place, the, the social place, but the physical place. This is, this is such a wonderful shift. And, and when you think about this shift, this is really tying in with exactly what Michael was talking about. And it's also what Erin was talking about. Three years, think about what has happened in the last three years since the conference back in 2018. We're sitting here talking over platforms that we couldn't even really communicate, let alone hold a conference like this. And now we do it every single day of the week and we're zooming in and out and, and, and FaceTiming and video connecting. This is all about change. It's all about that capacity, as Michael said, to yarn. And citizen science is all about the yarn because science is captured yarns. It's captured observations those observations Michael spoke of that go back tens and thousands of years. And what we're doing is no different to that science that he spoke about, whether it's the fish traps in Brewarana, whether it's the understanding for, of the, the, the flowering of, of a particular species in Arnhem Land signals the movement and, and um, mating of the dugong. These are observations. This is science at its purest. And 
when I think about the growth and the interest and the development of citizen science and how much it's exponentially, I mean, the algorithm on citizen science at the moment is like this. And I've been thinking about it and I'll touch on this in my keynote or in my um, talk tomorrow. Science has been about custodianship, as Michael said. It's custodianship of facts and information, information that's been observed, assimilated, collated, and passed down. And I think we're currently going through, if you talk about even just these last three years, I think as a time bracket, it sits well. These last three years, what's happened to truth? What's happened to facts? There's been fake news has become this capacity to undermine, create fear, to, to erode the, the, the very essence of information and truth. Where do we find our, our truth now? What is truth? Truth is a, a certain certainties. They're, they're valuable pieces of knowledge that we pass down. And that's been that's been eroded. It's been it's been undermined by, you know, very specific campaigns to drive fear. And where can we go to avoid that? Citizen science. Citizen science is, as Michael said, a community. It's a group. It's a place where we do feel safe because we're observing nature, and nature tells us truth. But it's up to us to assimilate that truth and work out how we then yarn it, how we turn science into social science in the sense that it's a social knowledge. The knowledge is only knowledge because we can share it. And that capacity to yarn, that, that, that yarn that gets passed down, it gets passed down from adult to children, it gets passed from adult to adult. That whole idea of totem, that you're in charge. You are in charge of, be it the grasses, First Nations passed on responsibilities. You're in charge of the, the, the waterways. You're in charge of one particular bird. And to do that, what did you need to know? If it was the glossy black cockatoo, you needed to look after the she-oaks, the casuarinas. That information still exists, still, still holds true. And, and what we can do through citizen science is really nurture and allow those connections to start to flow. And how are they flowing today? They're flowing through things like BirdLife Australia's Aussie Backyard Bird Count last weekend. And when you think about that as a, as a, as a citizen science event, 160,000 submissions over the week counting more than 5 million birds. The great, oh, what's that? Oh, okay. The great Southern Bio Blitz just took place with thousands and thousands of, of contributions from citizen science. So these things are our place. This is where we can, can share um, safety and certainty within a community that's growing trust, it's passing it on to our next generation and nurturing the information as a valuable resource. We've got a few days of this. Take advantage. Use the chats in talks. Communicate alongside. Follow people's bios. Click and link through socials. Hashtag citizen science. Get this out there on all the platforms to draw people in to the value of this community and to its long-held history and, most of all, its it's really prosperous future. Can't wait to communicate over the next couple of days. Thank you so much, Costa, and enjoy the next three days. We'll see you all online.